beloved i believe that's the word of the lord i honestly do i've tried and i the word of god says be, that i must prove all things and hold fast that which is good and i believe it's the word of the lord i want to encourage us to be on our knees to be on our face to be in repentance before the lord so that we like the people of nineveh can turn away this judgment from our nation and we can be in a place where we can really enjoy the blessings that god has in store for this nation amen you can also see the entire video if you didn't view it so far it's on youtube our channel is look what god is doing just type look what god is doing tsunami guyana brother colin essie who many of this you should be able to find it already there are over twelve thousand views we give god praise and i trust that armies are being raised up to fight intercessors prophetic intercessors amen so we're going to continue looking at sex god's way sex god's way this is sanctification and we talked about the high priest being in the holy of holies and we're going to put that slide up again the high priest on yom kippur the day of atonement yom kippur the day of atonement yes we're going to look at that slide and this is a day when all israel's sins were were were, were done away with once a year every year they had to do it and the high priest going into the holy of holies one it was an exclusive privilege based on a covenant between god and his people the next slide shows that it was an exclusive privilege and you could read about that in exodus 34 and verse 27 which says and the lord said unto moses write thou these words for after the tenor of these words i have made a covenant with you and with israel it was a blood covenant it was a blood covenant the high priest couldn't go in without blood and then we can look at leviticus chapter 16 and verse 2 take these verses down leviticus 16 and verse 2 the Lord said to Moses, Speak unto Aaron, Aaron was the high priest, your brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. It was an exclusive responsibility. Only Aaron could go in beyond that veil, not any and everybody. Only Aaron could go in beyond the veil. And then we can see Leviticus. If you understand Leviticus, you're going to understand the book of Hebrews even better. And Hebrews chapter 7 says, verse 23, And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of of death right there were many many different high priests but they died and when one died then another one could take over and then again in Hebrews 9 and verse 1 it says then it speaks about the first covenant and also the ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary and if you go all the way down to verse 11 it speaks about our Lord Jesus Christ. I would really love you to read all of this. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Our Lord Jesus is the substance of what we saw there. Many different high priests going in once per year. But our Lord Jesus Christ he went in to the second he went beyond the veil that veil was rent in twain that veil was rent in twain and that's why we have that access and then we also see in hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1 
Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So this thing about going into the Holy of Holies is an exclusive responsibility. Exclusive. Not any and everybody goes into the Holy of Holies. If you read Leviticus chapters 16 and 23, you would see that this entering the Holy of Holies by the high priest was meticulously prepared for. Meticulously prepared for. You go through and see the requirements. And then, of course, it brings immeasurable blessings. In Leviticus 16, verse 17, it says, And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place, until he came out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. The high priest going right beyond the veil made it possible for all Israel to be cleansed from all this sin. Beloved, when you cleanse from all your sin, all, 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 look at the blessings that come. But I also want you to see that you can court death. You can actually court death if you, you, you go into the holy of ho that holy of holies in any old way. And we saw that in Leviticus 16 too. Part B, it says that Aaron was not to go in any old way, which that he die not. That was Leviticus 16, 2B. And then if you go down to verse 12, it says here, and he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire. This is like quote unquote foreplay. Okay, this is before he actually does the rest of the ceremony in the Holy of Holies. He shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. That's one time when the censer with the incense goes within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. If things weren't done as God would want it done, that high priest, though he was a legitimate high, legitimate high priest in a legitimate temple or tabernacle, doing it on a legitimate day, the day of atonement, young Kippur, he could die because God is not interested in strange fire. What is the conclusion of the matter here? I see when I look at God's way for sex, sex God's way, one high priest per temple. You never had two high priests alive at the same time. One high priest per temple. Remarriage after divorce is institutionalized adultery, pornea. I know that I'm being bold. Remarriage after divorce is institutionalized adultery or pornea. Next, a high priest can only serve one and in one temple. A man doesn't have six, seven, eight women. He can't marry a whole set of women. One temple. A high priest can only serve one and in one temple. Polygamy and the outside woman and women, that's adultery. Conclusion. The undefiled bed. The undefiled bed. You see those pillows there? Lovely white pillows. Consist of one man and one woman in covenant doing it God's way. The undefiled bed consists of one man and one woman in covenant doing it God's way. God says, be ye holy for I am holy. It's a high calling, beloved. But it's God who works in us. And the final product, Ephesians 5.27. God wants a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Be encouraged, beloved. God's doing it for you. He's doing it for me. Reminding you of our announcements, Lamaha Street Fellowship meets on Sundays. And uh, between, at 9 o'clock for prayer, prayers, worship, just going before the Lord, hearing his word, following him. 
We offer a counseling and deliverance ministry. We work by appointment. The numbers to call, 226-9523-233-6752. You want to contact us by email, lwgid at live.com, or by snail mail. Look what God is doing in care of the Lamaha Street Fellowship, P.O. Box 10755, Georgetown, Guyana. Until next week, may the Lord richly bless you. Amen.